A magnitude 6 earthquake has hit off the coast of Ecuador. There hasn't been any reports of damage or tsunami warnings. But it happened as Ecuador deals with rebuilding from last weekend's quake in Muisne. Nearly 600 people died and 4,000 were injured. Thousands have been left homeless. President Rafael Correa says rebuilding could cost between 2 and 3 billion dollars. A 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck off Ecuador's northwest coast late on Saturday. The tremor hit at around 8 p.m. local time at a depth of 20 kilometers. Officials say it has caused considerable damage. That big headline overseas, rescuers in a race against time to find survivors after that devastating earthquake in Ecuador killed hundreds. This drone footage showing the damage. ABC's Lindsay Janice is on the scene now for us. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning, Robin. We just arrived in this coastal town nearest to the quake's epicenter. Police telling me the buildings behind me are hotels where they believe dozens of tourists are still trapped. They say it's been so difficult to get here. The search for survivors really only began a day ago. So far, they found just one person alive, but they are hopeful there will be others. Crews working through the night, searching for survivors buried deep under the rubble of Ecuador's 7.8 magnitude quake. More than 400 killed, among them at least one American. But amid the devastation, there is hope. This dramatic footage capturing the moment emergency workers rescued three people from beneath this collapsed shopping center. One seen waving his hand from underneath the debris. Trapped for 32 hours, the man emerging headfirst out of a 28-inch hole drilled through the concrete. The husband of one of the women crying out, I felt she was alive. In another hard-hit area, rescue crews also saving this dog. Drone video revealing the extent of the destruction. Buildings leaning, entire floors crushed, other structures flattened. Thousands of survivors now homeless, sleeping in makeshift shelters. Overnight, we found this family resting in front of their destroyed home right near the quake's epicenter. And earlier in the day, Katerina Pinargote telling us she and her two young children were not at home when their apartment building was flattened. A worker only able to recover a few of her baby daughter's shoes. You don't even have a pair here. American teacher Brian Bayer was inside this apartment building when the quake struck, ceilings caving in and concrete crumbling. The entire building was jumping up and down, absolutely traumatized. The official death toll across Ecuador is now over 400, and that number is expected to rise. There are hundreds feared dead in this town alone. The good news is international aid is making its way here, and the U.S. is sending a team of disaster experts. Robin? That's good to know. All right, Lindsay, thank you very much. And those scenes are just absolutely devastating. Well, they certainly are. Those three powerful earthquakes in three days, the hunt for survivors intense, a race against time. But in Ecuador, rescuers had to pause the search, waiting out one of hundreds of aftershocks. In Japan, back-to-back -back earthquakes triggered landslides, destroying roads, isolating hard-hit towns. All of the quakes along the Pacific Ring of Fire, which also includes the U.S. West Coast. ABC's Lindsay Janice is on the scene in Ecuador tonight. This is the moment a 7.8 magnitude earthquake strikes. Panicked screams, and then the lights go out. Entire city blocks leveled. Homes collapsed with people still inside. More than 350 dead and thousands more injured. This overpass is one of the busiest roads in Guayaquil. The powerful earthquake causing it to collapse, shredding tons of concrete and steel. American teacher Brian Bayer inside this badly damaged building when it struck. The entire building was jumping up and down. It was the scariest moment of my life. 
These firefighters working for hours to free this man. Nearby, a man talking through a tiny hole to his family, stuck below ground. Across the Pacific, Japan still reeling from those two deadly jolts that hit in the dead of night. Earthquake! ABC's okay, Matt Gutman hiked to tremor. this dramatic scene. This mudslide was over a half mile wide. It came roaring down this mountain, ripping it in half, then obliterating that bridge and those roads on the other side. Those three deadly earthquakes all on the volatile ring of fire that also includes the west coast of the U.S. So tonight, many are asking if we're next. Here in California, we expect an earthquake the size of the one that hit in Japan about once every decade or two. We can tell from geology that Pacific Northwest, at some point, they're going to have a magnitude 9. A chilling warning there. And Lindsay Janice joins us now from Guayaquil. And Lindsay, so much concern now that this death toll is going to rise even more. That's right, George. With so many still missing, that number is expected to rise. We're also learning tonight that one American is among the dead. But on a brighter note, three people have now been pulled from a collapsed shopping center where they were trapped for more than 32 hours. George? Small bit of good news. Okay, Lindsay, thanks very much. Forty-four thousand plus people have evacuated the Japanese town of Mashiki on the southern portion of the land of the rising sun following a 7.4 magnitude earthquake that has killed at least nine and injured 858. If you have been paying attention, you may have noticed the frequency of earthquakes being reported in 2016 has been unyielding. Recently, a magnitude 6.5 earthquake hit Vanuatu. A magnitude 5.9 earthquake hit the southern Philippines. A magnitude 6.9 earthquake rocked Myanmar, and on April 10th, a 6.6 .6 magnitude quake hit Kabul with aftershocks in India. On April 8th, there was a magnitude 4.2 earthquake in Nepal. Nepal was also hit earlier with a large 5.5 magnitude quake on February 22nd. And in the beginning of 2016, on January 20th, there was a 6.1 magnitude earthquake in China. And 16 days prior, 11 people had died when a 6.7 magnitude earthquake hit Manipur in India. Michael Snyder of End of the American Dream writes, Why is the crust of the earth shaking so violently all of a sudden? Seismologist Wilhelm of the University of Colorado has made headlines all over the world by warning that current conditions might trigger at least four earthquakes greater than 8.0 in magnitude. If his projections are accurate, our planet could be on the precipice of a wave of natural disasters unlike anything that any of us have ever experienced before. Basically, what we saw in Japan earlier today is tiny. Compared to the destruction, Bilham has been desperately trying to compel governments all over the globe to be aware of. But Bilham has been turned away from at least one country that refused to hear the truth. In 2012, Indian officials deported Bilham when his plane arrived in New Delhi. Why? Bilham had raised concerns about the dangerous seismic activity in the Jaipur region where a nuclear plant was being planned. Meanwhile, authorities are quietly racing to monitor the many volcanoes blowing their tops. Currently, there are 38 active volcanoes as the Earth moves through its volcano season. The WorldNet Daily writes, There is a 5% to a 10% chance in the next 80 years, scientists say. One of these eruptions will kill millions of people and poison the atmosphere beyond the imagination of anything man's activity could do in a thousand years. And no one is yet making any plans to deal with the calamitous possibilities. But earthquakes are earthquakes, and uh, I don't know. Hopefully we just won't ever have to worry about it. How does that make you feel, living here and running a business here? Um, it just feels kind of awkward. I uh, didn't know about that fault. Uh, we've had earthquakes here in the last two or three months that weren't as big as this. Uh, but uh, I'm just happy that I have a, a building that I know that can withstand it. This relatively unknown fault line that was here, and you can see where the road has just separated in two. It was pushed up against each other directly in this area. Sidewalks are about three feet high in some places. 
true to California fashion, some of the children have seen this as their opportunity to have their own makeshift bike ramps and skate ramps, trying to make the best of this situation. All eyes should be on the ring of fire as the trenches activate the tectonic plates at exponential levels and earthquake news events multiply. Researchers reveal natural disasters have caused over 8 million deaths and $7 trillion worth of damage over the past 115 years. Dr. James Daniel has collected and evaluated over 35,000 natural disaster events that have occurred around the world since the year 1900. So we take this data and then what we've done is we've collected then um, the value over time of each disaster and we've we've come up with a value around seven trillion US dollars and this is for earthquake, flood, storm, wildfire, drought and temperature. The study says around a third of economic losses between the years 1900 and 2015 have been caused by floods with earthquakes and storms showing an increasing role in recent times. The announcement was made at Europe's largest geosciences conference bringing together around 13,000 scientists from around the world. Meanwhile, researchers from the European Commission say in the coming decades, Europe will be much more frequently exposed to extreme weather events like heat waves, droughts and wildfires under global warming. The increase, they say, will manifest particularly in southwestern regions. We retain that these hazards, these changes in frequency are strongly linked with the rise in temperatures, particularly in, in those regions that are expected to have to manifest larger changes in temperature. Meanwhile, in key hotspots like coastlines and floodplains, which are often highly populated, floods and windstorms could cause extreme damage, according to the research, in combination with other climate hazards. so powerful, it actually costs the Earth to wobble on its axis, slowing its revolution, and shortening that fateful day by almost three microseconds. The 2004 tsunami is a mega disaster that came out of nowhere. Or did it? The Earth appears to be getting more deadly than ever before. We know that there are many cases where the worst has not yet been seen. Are natural disasters becoming more frequent and more deadly? Where earthquakes, volcanoes, and hurricanes are poised to strike death blows against helpless populations. Can we avoid the outbursts of our violent planet? Or are we like this man on a beach in Thailand, helpless in the path of Mother Nature's fury?
some news just in. The death toll from earthquake in Nepal has reached 1,457 people. The quake with a magnitude of 7.9 is the strongest to have hit the country in over 80 years. It reduced residential areas and centuries-old temples to rubble in Cal. 7.7 just struck off Papua New Guinea, triggering a tsunami alert. That's according to the U.S. Geological Survey. The epicenter was 34 miles or 54 kilometers southeast of Kokopo. The Pacific Tsunami Warning Center says hazardous waves are possible for coasts within 1,000 kilometers away from the epicenter. This morning, buildings buckling in Nepal. 6.7 aftershock sending an already shaken community running and turned this once gleaming monument into a pile of bricks. The original magnitude 7.8 earthquake felt by nearly 6 million people in Nepal, India, China and Bangladesh. Even unleashing massive avalanches 100 miles away. It sure is getting a lot of attention here and across the country. We've learned that Scientists think a volcano is erupting off the coast of Oregon and Washington. Yeah, it's about 300 miles from Astoria, but thousands of small earthquakes a day are coming with it. 300 miles off the Oregon coast, three quarters of a mile underwater, the ocean floor is shaking. At least two dozen have died in what's supposed to be the driest time of year. Further south in neighboring Chile, the rain is still causing trouble. Copiapo is the capital of the Atacama region, normally one of the driest places on earth. It normally gets about a centimeter of rain a year, not this year. It's taken the authorities completely by surprise. Chilean authorities have declared a state of emergency in the worst affected areas. Military helicopters and emergency crews were sent in to rescue people who had been left stranded by the flooding. Almost 11,000 people have been affected and more than 4,500 are in shelters. Good evening. With a brutal winter barely behind us, tornado season is quickly firing up with several states on alert right now for severe weather. This on the heels of last night's violent storms that triggered massive flooding, especially in Kentucky where a mother and child were swept away in their car and remain missing. Right now, firefighters in Louisville are still wrestling with this massive industrial fire that may have been sparked by lightning. Overnight, more than 30 million Americans are dealing with a deadly string of storms. <laughs> Tornado warning sirens are sounding the alarms as hail, torrential rains, and wind up to 68 miles per hour battered Tennessee, causing power outages in thousands of homes and reports of dime-sized hail in Georgia. In Kentucky Friday, roads collapsing as rushing water to tear through neighborhoods. One woman dead after floodwaters swept her car off the road. Tonight, rescue teams are wrapping up the search for survivors of a tornado that devastated a small Illinois town, one of at least two to be hit in the area last evening. This is what it left behind. 50 miles of devastation, leveled houses, buried cars, and enormous debris fields. The tornado's path of destruction was clear. Homes flattened, wood splintered and piled like matchsticks, as far as the eye could see in the tiny farming town of Fairdale. Tornado on the ground. Overnight wild weather across much of the country. Look at that. Funnel clouds forming across the heartland. Another one coming down there. A rainbow appearing in the midst of this tornado. In Kansas, hail hammering drivers so hard, this storm chaser windshield shatters as they battle the elements. This morning in North Carolina, they're cleaning up after hail cracked windows and damaged cars. In Potosi, Missouri, it hit the transformer. There was like sparks, I like screamed. Trees down, roofs damaged, and reports of a possible tornado after a storm rolled through here. I was like freaking out because I saw a cloud going down in circles. So then I started getting down real low and then started tucking my head. 75 mile per hour winds ripping trees from the ground in Ohio. As you can tell, they're not small trees. In Idaho, roads in need of a good plow. After nearly six inches of hail hit the ground, drivers of cars and buses caught off guard. The St. Louis skyline lit up with lightning. This bolt getting dangerously close to planes.
明日芝居しましょう。In March 2011, the world watched in awe and horror as a colossal tsunami ravaged eastern Japan. The result of a 9.0 magnitude earthquake. Entire cities were washed away. Millions stranded without power or water. 15,000 died. It was an otherworldly event, thousands of miles away. Thank goodness, many of us thought. It couldn't happen here. But it could happen here. In fact, scientists say it's a question of when, not if, a devastating earthquake, followed by a huge tsunami, strikes the continental United States. Right here in the Pacific Northwest, this would be like five or six Katrinas all at once, up up and down from California to、uh, to Canada would be the closest thing I can think of. It may sound like a Hollywood disaster movie, I see it. but it's not. This is the future for the region's seven million people, says Chris Goldfinger. A paleo seismologist at Oregon State University. In fact, his research shows much of the region is overdue for a major quake. The last one was back in 1700, long before there were large cities right in harm's way. If it happens anytime soon, it would just just devastate the area. Goldfinger estimates there's a one in three chance the quake will strike. Sometime in the next 50 years, would you say that we're prepared for something like this? We're not completely unprepared, but、uh, we're pretty darn close. On a scale of one to ten, we're probably a little shy of one at this point.、Uh, this is Ground Zero, the 700-mile-long area off the Pacific coast called the Cascadia Subduction Zone, where the North American tectonic plate meets another plate. Known as the Juan de Fuca, the dark image we're seeing here is literally sliding under the lighter image. That's right. So they're converging, but still stuck.、Mm. And so what happens is the weaker plate, which is North America, buckles, and eventually something's going to give. So the coastline that's been jacked up over 500-ish years or so is going to drop about a meter、uh, in about a minute or so. And that's just the earthquake. Next, as we saw in Japan, comes a tsunami, with waves as high as 50 feet roaring on shore, reaching miles inland. It's a threat the government says it's taking seriously. But is FEMA ready for the big one? I would never say we are ready. Ken Murphy is the administrator for FEMA Region 10. These represent the roads、uh, that can be affected by the earthquake, or out here on the coastline can be affected by the tsunami. The agency has spent years preparing the federal response. FEMA's best-case scenario: 10,000 dead, and that's assuming no beach tourists, which would lead to their worst-case scenario, simply too terrifying to contemplate. Depending on when it happens, we're, we're talking numbers that、uh, this nation, I'm not sure, is really prepared to deal with. Potentially the greatest natural disaster this country has ever experienced. I would say it has the potential、uh, for that.、Uh, this is an event you send everything to and scale back down if you don't need it. The quake could displace a million people from northern California to southern Canada. Large parts of Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver. Will crumble. In coastal towns, roads and bridges will likely be impassable, stranding whole communities. The region's economy could collapse. Rebuilding might take years, even decades. And few places are more at risk than this one. It's Seaside, Oregon's school complex. 1,500 students in four aging buildings. Superintendent Doug Dockerty. The structural engineers tell us that a vast majority of the building will collapse in a seismic event. Three of Seaside's four schools 
are also in the tsunami zone. In fact, its high school is just feet away from the Pacific Ocean. The students and staff, if they are able to evacuate, earthquake start, have between 15 and 20 minutes to get to high ground, 1.3 miles. And that's one of those other pieces that uh, keeps me awake at night. 100 miles to the north in Westport, Washington, Acosta Elementary is another school with seemingly no way out. So it built its own way out. Doing a great job. Straight up. A new school building currently under construction offers safe and high ground right on its roof. It's the country's first vertical evacuation structure with walls 44 feet high and 14 inches thick. Run as fast as you can, get up into the tsunami safe area. Superintendent Paula Ackerlin says voters approved an additional $2 million for the emergency structure. The community, you know, they were looking at the safety of not just their children now, but generations in the future. This is not an affluent community, so it's a huge commitment. Other evacuation plans and seismic upgrades are taking place, but not nearly fast enough, say the experts. Back at Seaside, Oregon, three years ago, the school district did try moving all its students to a new campus. But when they found out it would take an 18% property tax increase, the voters rejected the measure by a margin of almost two to one. Were you surprised? Oh, I was not only surprised, but heartbroken. It's just very, very expensive for our local citizens to uh, foot the bill entirely. I hope people don't uh, understand the implications of their decisions because that would basically be writing off an entire school district student population. As for Oregon State's Chris Goldfinger, he continues to warn about a disaster that science says is just a matter of time. This is going to scare a lot of people. Well, I, I don't think that's a bad thing. If you're really well prepared and the infrastructure is hardened, that can be the end of it. If you don't plan at all, it's going to be a catastrophe. And then uh, uh, there's, there's just nothing you can do about that. Run on the wall, great is the army that carries out his word. The Lord utters his voice before his army. The Lord utters his voice before his army. 